जय श्री माता जी लेट अस ऑल कलेक्टिवली बाउ डाउन टू श्री माता जी रेज अवर मदर कुंडलिनी एंड पुट बंधन Let us recite Shri Ganesh Mantra. Let us all place our both hands on Mother Earth. Shri Mataji. kindly help us to balance our ida and pingla nadi shamata ji kindly dissolve all our ego and super ego all the guilt and the aggression and bring us into complete balance left hand back in our lap right hand on our heart shamata ji kindly help us establish faith 
in our hearts towards Sahaja Yoga and towards Adi Shakti. Let's bring our attention in our Sahasra. Let us place our right hand on the Sahasra. Shamataji. And you bring us all into complete thoughtlessness. Both hands back in our lap. And let us listen to Shamataji's speech in this state of meditation. About Sahaja culture. Alright? Sahaja culture, I explained to you what is a Sahaja culture is in which you have to grow. Then last night, Miss Judy, she's there. come in, come in, sit down, there, let him sit. Then last night, I talked to you about ego, that uh, how ego manifests itself and how it is difficult to get out of the ego. It's easy to get out of the conditioning super egos, but very difficult to get out of ego because ego aggresses others, doesn't trouble you at all, and you enjoy that aggression. See, now today I want to tell you about how ego has been historically, traditionally torturing people around. So you will see the manifestation of this ego, and then you will know that if you are playing anything, any role with your ego, you could be a part and parcel of that destructive force. So to begin with, we'll see now, when this ego started growing in man, first of all, see, it started growing with the protection. Hmm. Don't put any ice in the coke, all right? That's, oh, sorry. Uh, no, there's no ice in this one, but next one. It's good, the other coke, it will be all right. So, the it's all right, Christine. It's all right. Uh, the pituitary, which is within us, started growing when we raised our head like this. When we are animals, our heads were like this. At that time, the pineal body, as it is called, was very powerful. They say in human beings the pineal doesn't work out, it's not true, it does. But they don't know how it works. Come along. Nice to see you. All right. So, this pineal body within us was very active when we were animal state. But when we raised our head, you see, a chemical change took place within ourselves in the sense that our brain started growing in a pyramid, which I have told you how, with the parallelogram of forces and all that, it has started growing into a pyramid. And when it became like that, you see, because the first it was only the pineal body looking after the superego, up to the animal kingdom, up to the kingdom where the animals sort of became more sort of humanized, then 
the ego started growing. It's the only animals who can use the matter. Uh, human beings can use the matter, not the animals. Animals cannot use the matter for their own purpose. When they started aggressing the matter, the ego started developing, and we developed this, what you call the pyramid of our brain. We started growing more and more and more and more like this. But when it reached its height, then we started using our ego more. We didn't stop at that point. We started moving on the other side. So this went down and it covered it completely like that. That's why we say the pineal body in the human beings doesn't work. It functions, no doubt, it functions. As a result of that, you see, when we saw this ego was growing, as a result of that, people felt extremely overconfident, what's wrong, business started long time back. Said the time of Columbus. As I said, if Columbus had come to India, he would not have seen me here. He would have finished all the Indians there. Not him, he was a very nice man, but th those who followed him. In the same way, this ego started destroying people and they had an idea for triumph and killing people, occupying lands, occupying territories, accumulating wealth, went on and on and on and on on this level. Then from there, they started. When the marriage system started in a proper way, again the aggression started on the women, and now the women are aggressing men like that. It's all became so aggressive. But when you aggress, you don't see that you are aggressing. This is the problem of the egoistical person. Though he may be a seeker, though he may be a, a very genuine seeker, but if he's in the area of ego, he never feels his own catches because the ego is in between, the reality in himself. So he cannot see his own catches, he cannot see how he is aggressing others, and he doesn't see how he is hurting others, troubling others, torturing others. And such a person can be extremely arrogant, extremely, uh, what you call the, strangulating. This is what happens when you get cancer also. When you get the cancer, what happens? It starts with the left side, no doubt. But when it comes into the person, then he becomes a person who is vulnerable to a disease or a disease where the person is aggressed. The person is aggressed. The cells of the body first develop the aggression. We call it malignant. When this cell comes in contact with others, that also becomes malignant. So that's how the malignancy spreads. And when it spreads, what happens? That supposing in the nose there are some cells which become malignant. So they start obstructing other organs to grow. The only nose will start growing like that. You mean to say not outside, but inside. So they aggress, you see, uh, the aggression starts, and they lose complete control with the whole, because there is no coordination with the whole. They don't see that the whole has to grow together, and not only the nose and not only the eyes, isn't it? And this breaking from the collectivity is the first sign when you find a Sahajogi, behaves in a funny way, that if he's breaking from the collectivity, then he is nothing but an egoist, no doubt about it, by any argument, by anything. But a person who is a super-ego fellow will stick on to the collectivity, will try to be very close to the ashram, will be very close to us, very much here, around it, even if you said, we don't want to, it will be there. Why? Because it re realizes that it is aggressed, and also it realizes that it can be sly. So when a left-sided person enters into an ashram, mm -hmm. that person would be very nice, quiet, sweet, everything. But the entities, the bhuts in him, will aggress the people slyly. They will torture it. But those people can be cured very easily, because they are troubled and tortured themselves. But those who are egoistical will be very difficult for them to get out of. 
that's why i've been talking about ego yesterday and today now you can see all aggression the manifested what's wrong say now i was talking about the chemicals now how did you discover these chemicals it is through your ego it's through your science now if the science is not related to god or to the whole then you go like that and then you can produce hydrogen bombs you can produce these horrible chemicals like it's what you call the foolhardiness you enter into every area every place and achieve the power over that but then you don't know what that is capable of supposing now you make computers suppose tomorrow these computers will eat you off I must tell you now there's a new disease I have discovered in people that their conscious mind overpowers them. There was a fellow who was like this, very egoistical. He didn't believe in God also. He's an Indian, and he met with an accident. His wife is a doctor. She's a friend of mine. She brought him to me. In my presence, he got up and walked off nicely. Everything. But on his own, whenever he wanted consciously to do it, he couldn't even raise his leg. Can you imagine? So with these egoistical people now a new disease is coming that consciously they cannot do anything. They cannot do anything. If this will come, I am promising you now, or I am warning you, as I warned the people who were going left-sided, that you will have a horrible disease, and this is the new disease for all the egoists. That consciously they won't be able to move. They'll be mute. Sitting there, only their ego will take over. It's a very dangerous era when you are born. You must know. This is the time you are precariously placed. Either you get to God or you go to hell. There's nothing in between. So a new disease will come very soon. There's no insanity in it. Nothing. You will be quite alert, but you can't move your hands. Your whole nervous system refuses to work. that's going to come very soon it will manifest you have seen that egoistical people have been going on like hitler and all that and they have destroyed the world and they have done so much harm to our value system in subtle way we say that all this manifestation of 25 years of all this horrible hell they have created for us is because of the wars because of the wars but these wars and things even if you avoid by some chance you avoid it still if ego is there it will manifest itself if you avoid it outside it will manifest inside and then you will find that you can't just move you can't blink you can't sleep you can't move your hands even now people can't sleep many and i don't want sir jogis to suffer from that horrible disease and western people are more liable to that kind of thing the sir jogis who are trying to get out of the collectivity who are asserting their ego under the name of bhoots or whatever it is should understand that it is 99% it is ego within us and that ego has to be faced oh i have a ego i feel guilty then all right you put it back here all your ego that's not the way that's not the way you will do today you are very active working very hard doing this tomorrow will find you will be just immobilized you can't move and persons don't care in this country as it is even for people who are for right but you'll become like old people who cannot move who see everything know everything who are conscious at a very young age this will happen the slightest accident with slightest disturbance you will just trigger off to that area where you will be absolutely like a mute person sitting you can't move your finger you can't hold anything you will not be in a coma Coma happens to people who take pills and things to go to the left, like drugs and things which take you to the left. But those who are right-sided, you will not be in coma. That's one thing. It's a curse. 
you will see everything, you will be alert, you will be knowing everything, but you can't even turn your head. Take it from me. That's coming very soon. You may be talking, you may not be talking, it can go to that level. Slowly, slowly you will find your body will be immobilized. People don't understand what dangers ego can have. It's not now the aggression outside so much, because it goes into left to Shuddhi, and this left to Shuddhi will create this horrible disease. Now, how do we control our ego is very important to understand. First of all, you must write your names and beat yourself with shoes for 108 times to begin with. Secondly, discipline yourself. By disciplining, get up in the morning, do your meditation with right hand towards the photograph, left hand this way. Not to use light at all, not to use sun, don't go to the sun at all. Sun is to be avoided, keep to the moon. Read the books which describes the Mahakalis or the left side Shaktis. Don't read the books like Avadhuta's book. You should never read it because you think you are an Avadhuta, you see. He said, I am omnipresent, I am this thing. The person starts feeling, I am this. I was reading the book of Avadhuta. Oh, I said, this book, this shows what, what's gone wrong with our incarnations. What's gone wrong with our incarnations is they never knew human beings at all, at what level they are. You come and tell them, I am formless and form, I am this and that, so what? <laughs> if you are that, all right, I am compassion, I am love, I am this, I am that, so what? How do you fill in these cups? You have to come down to a human level. That's what they did not try, and that's why it's all a waste. I think, on the contrary, everybody thinks I am God, I am Brahma. Brahma is me. Shivoham. <laughs> Finished. And then they quarrel among themselves. That growth, that maturity has not come. It's very shallow. The whole thing becomes very shallow. You become a shallow person and you live with it. So the first thing, practical thing I'm telling you, beat yourself with you. And I'm not this. Like that you have to start, first of all, telling yourself. If you are a seeker and truthful seeker and honest seeker, then I advise you this way, that you watch yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, now you, Mr. Ego XYZ, will you get out from here? I know what I am, you get out. You have to get after all this and laugh at yourself, smile at yourself, make fun of yourself. That's the best, and never feel hurt if anybody says you are egoistical, and then you will say, I know. <laughs> I know, if you know you are egoistical, then how, how do you go further? Now ego manifests in so many ways through your eyes, through your ears, through your mouth, through your nose, everywhere. Because you go against God, that is, you go against collectivity, because you go against Shri Krishna, against your Vishuddhi Chakra. That's first thing it manifests. Nowadays nobody beats people like this. You see, we have become subtler in our ego manifestation. We use this part, not hands. It can be that you show temper through your eyes, or it can be you flirt with your eyes. You become adulterous. That's why Christ has said, don't become adulterous. So now it's nice that the AIDS can work out through the tears. It's good. You used to kiss people, all right. Now kiss. Nobody will kiss now. You used all your Shuddhi Chakra so far to express all filth. Now the filth is pouring out. So, in the second stage, when we understand that it's through the Vishuddhi, that is this America, we express ourselves, our ego. So what should we do? First of all, stop talking. Hear the way people talk. I mean, you see, you have to just start opening your mouth like this and like that, you go on. 
and the other is talking you just you tell them something they just come on you with all the knowledge they have known everything a to z and you don't know where you are how do you stop talking i have told you a practical thing i'll get you beetle nuts which i'll vibrate put it in the mouth <laughs> and you take it out when you have to talk the rest keep it there that's shri ganesha don't take it out stop talking If you stop talking, your hypocrisy will go away. But through our face, we are hypocritical. Everything works out through Vishuddhi. Now, see, a person who is extremely aggressive, you see, can also act to be very, very sweet. You see, if they have to exploit you or make money out of you, they can act. Acting, the whole acting comes through this Vishuddhi. Then you act. You are a very gentle person. You are very good, but you are not. You are aggressive. So, for that, you have to know that talking less will reduce fifty percent of your hypocrisy and acting. Fifty percent. Now, fifty percent still left. Now, what to do with the fifty percent? Fifty percent is a thing where. we have to know what other chakras are responsible for ego manifestation is one is the hamsa is very important hamsa is we use when we want to show temper indifference <laughs> then a person thinks oh god what have i done to this person that's how we show our temper all the time like this that's hamsa and that's why we have to use what we call the simple thing called ghee or something oilish for ears for nose for eyes the kajal and for this portion also you have to put some ghee in hot Water or milk, and take it so that you soothe down your nerves, and you soothe down your vishuddhi, and also you soothe down the what we call in a general way is the peritoneum, but is the is the lining lining. As we soothe down our fingers and hands uh, when they are dried, we have to soothe. Rub ghee here, ghee here, oil here, oil there in the head. Now the modern style is not to put oil in the head. You will become bald, balded gentleman. Of course, you can still act like Yul Brenner, <laughs> but he died of cancer. <laughs> His sister is our disciple, and you will develop funny hair styles, everything. And now this modern fashion has started. Don't put any oil. I don't know from where it has come. Or the children also, they say, don't put any oil in the ears. This is doctors; they want to create patients. Don't listen to them. Before going traveling or anywhere, put oil in your ears, into your noses, uh, not the oil but ghee, and control your peritoneum through your hamsa chakra. It's very. Important. This is the chakra, which really helps you very much. Sit down. Now in Sanskrit, and also in many colloquial language, ghee is called as neha, and sneha is love. Neha also is love. So you have to oil it down, so the frictions are less. We know in nature when we have to reduce the friction, we put oil. Like we have to say a uh, launch a ship. that i have launched i know what it is they had to put grease on the thing and you just touch the ship and the ship moves so smoothly on to the sea beautifully it moves in india they put bananas because banana is a uh, very easily available so they put bananas see and that and here they use grease in england for example they use grease so in the same way we have to grease ourselves our language our tone 
or speaking must be greased, greased with love. And love is such a powerful thing that can attract anyone, let it be even Hitler. When you talk to someone or say something, it should have that coating of chocolate, of love. Then you can even give castor oil, I do that. <laughs> so, all these things are to be understood in its essence that we should not become stupid as other people are. We are yogis and we have to have an ideal life which manifests itself in all kinds of dynamism. And we do not waste this great blessing that we have got. Now with this another chakra which is always caught is the Agya, Agya chakra. In the Agya chakra we have to become thoughtlessly aware, but we can. If you watch your thoughts you will know mostly we think of the people who have harmed us, who have troubled us. Sometimes we have, the, we have the glimpse of the good things also, we think of the good people also, sometimes. Normally we are thinking about the people who have harmed us, hurt us, this thing, that. Now Christ, who is Sri Ganesha and who has all the powers to kill us and finish us off and destroy us completely, has given us the greatest weapon is to forgive. So the mantra here is forgive. And you have to see that you forgive others. Anybody says anything, forgive. When you forgive, God takes over and He knows how to handle or mishandle or to do whatever He likes to that person. That's not your job, you just forgive. So you give Him a ticket, go to God, I forgive you, I have nothing to say. And you have to forgive. And that is the thing you can enjoy your Agya Chakra very well and raise your Kundalini beyond by saying, forgive, forgive, forgive three times. And you have to say the mantra of Nirvichara, no thoughts. Agya is the one which brings thoughts to you. That's why Christ was so particular on the eyes that you, thou shalt not have adulterous eyes. Try to concentrate your eyes on the Mother Earth for some time. She'll suck in. So that your attention doesn't become that wobbly, becomes concentrated and equalized and balanced. When that is done, your eyes become so powerful. Even if you look at somebody, you can cure that person.
let us recite the mahamantras Thank you, Shumata Ji, for this beautiful collective morning meditation. Let us all bow down to Shumata Ji, raise our Mother Kundalini, and put Pandan.
we will continue again tomorrow morning same time jai shri mata ji